Pelta Company presents Diet Challenge is the first reality show in the world in which nine participants diagnosed with type 1 diabetes challenge themselves to reach their set goals despite their serious condition to share their diabetes story. And for most of the participants, it's quite a painful experience. I don't know what to do after the show airs. Real problems. Real success. This path that she had to walk on her own was very hard. There are times when you just lose your mind. Real victories. A reality project whose heroes are people living with diabetes. Everybody has to play the hand that they're dealt. We're trailblazers. We're on the way to our goals. And it's not about whether you're weak or strong. It's whether you want to or not. We challenged ourselves. Have you? Today is the third group meeting at the cottage. Main theme of the day participants' first results of their work with the diet challenge experts. Colleagues, let's discuss the participants' work. Who shall we start with? Let's start with uh, Veronika. I can see that she's working out, posting reports. What do you think? She really is doing well, in my opinion. I don't know if you recall or not, but when we first met Veronika, she told us that she didn't like to exercise. And that she had many attempts at getting into it, but would give up on it not long after. At one point, she straight up said, I hate working out. And now? Well, now Veronika is saying that she's beginning to like what she's doing. It feels like I'm gaining muscles that I didn't even know that they existed. She didn't go easy on herself and gave it 100%. And we can see the results. She definitely looks different, and according to her, she dropped a whole size. 88.3 you deserve applause. Yeah. <laughs> the pants that I wore during casting are now falling off. My husband told me to wear a belt because I kept pulling them up. And I told him that I won't because I like how it feels. I injected one unit every time, but I see that my sugar is six. Ideally, I would like it to be five. Olya Shukina loves her diabetes. Olya knows a lot about diabetes. I never had a question to the doctor about my sugars. Initially, my main problem with insulin and diabetes wasn't my sugar levels or the dosing. I just didn't realize that I was overweight, yeah? And this extra weight also affects insulin and sensitivity to it. Speaking in scientific terms, I had high insulin resistance. Insulin resistance, decreased insulin sensitivity. A condition in which insulin-dependent tissues and organs, adipose, muscular, liver and others, demand greater insulin concentration for glucose utilization. Associated with both genetic features and body weight. It's an integral part of the pathogenesis of type 2 diabetes. However, with weight gain and with type 1 diabetes, insulin resistance increases, just like with anybody else. At the same time, the need for insulin increases in proportion to the weight. Healthy weight is important. Anastasia said it best. I must lose weight, not just for looks, but also to help me with my compensation. According to the scale, Olya has lost 4 kilos. Her total daily insulin dose dropped by 10 units during her first month on the project. The work of experts with the participants runs under the slogan, if there is a problem, there is a solution. Sometimes at 5 a.m. you have hypoglycemia. I can wake up due to it. I never thought that Traceba would suit me more than Lantus. I often had hypoglycemia on Lantus. I was very scared. I told Anastasia, uh, how would my insulin be applied if it works for 48 hours? And I inject myself every day. Wouldn't that be a double dose? 
but she told me not to worry about it. And to my surprise, everything worked out. I got rid of my nightly hypo episodes. If we talk about the girls, I see their reports in the group, I see them training, sweating, and breaking themselves in some ways. There are a few participants that are having a tougher time than the rest. In my opinion, there are three of them. It's Kirill Kuzmin, Dmitry Shevkunov, and Anastasia Martinuk. Nastya, what are you doing? I'm posing. I'm relaxing. Nastya is great at the start. At first, she's on fire. And then when it comes to actual systematic and constant work, she has trouble. I promise, I'll sort it out. I will sort it out and become an obedient student. I'll behave and be good. This time, Nastya thoroughly prepared for her meeting with the endocrinologist. Brought in her filled out diary and meal reports from last week. She's trying, she's really trying, but she didn't do the most important thing. She didn't get her nutrition in order. She eats often and mostly carbs. We can't work on the pump since we can't eat right. Nastya completes all the tasks and recommendations I give to her. 16 seconds and you beat the record. But she doesn't get that you can train all you want, but if you're not monitoring your meals, you can forget about any results. It's raining today, so Alexei is working inside. Also, our trainer had to temporarily become one of the participants after the host, Dmitry Grinevich, asked him to play a diabetes quiz game. Look, guys, I got a question with three possible answers. For example, if you pick A, raise one finger. Raise two fingers if you choose answer B. And, nice to raise three fingers to choose C. Okay, question number one. What is the literal definition of diabetes mellitus? Is it A, sweet blood, B, sweet siphon, or C, sweet disease? Dina, Dina picked B, <laughs> Dasha says A, both Alexei and Veronika choose C. Crap, let's all copy Dina, she's the smartest, let's go with B. The correct answer is B. No way! Give Dina a round of applause. Anastasia, what do you think of Dasha? Dasha is an amazing girl. I like that she came on the project with specific goals in mind. And in my opinion, nothing will stop her from accomplishing them. Okay, let's give it a try. She's the type of person, let's just say she makes full use of me on the project, a thousand percent. Same with me, yeah. Same with Alexei, even at night, seriously, yeah. Strictly professional. She's constantly in touch, even when I'm asleep. Adjusting the doses. My nightly ones are a problem. She said to take it step by step, so right now we're sorting out the nights. So I send her pictures of my diary and she looks at what can be adjusted. It was 11 p.m. and I was still sending pictures. It's food, food, okay, okay, it's food. You mean you're still hungry? Okay, stop, time out. Dasha, tell us, help everyone understand, what is this dream that you came on the project with? Help us decipher it, show us, explain it to us. I wanted to draw a golden mean, but I couldn't find a picture of it online to draw from, so I decided to draw scales. I initially came here to find middle ground, between happiness and my diabetes compensation. Overall, I can see that the guys are trying hard. To be honest, Dima Shevkunov, 
blew me away with his enrollment in a gym. Despite him having to look after his kids, plus he has a crazy work schedule. It isn't easy for Dima, he's trying his hardest. The veggies that you have in this soup work slower because of the broth. He told me yesterday that I have a terrible temper. And I'm sitting there smiling. <laughs> because, well, this means that the path we chose is the right one. I pour in the water and I know exactly how much proteins, fats and carbs I have in this pot. Okay, I can find out how many portions of the soup there are. The results are very different from the other participants. In his case, it's the amount of effort he puts into it, which is a lot. I've had this rule since childhood. If I'm scared, I move forward. If it's hard and painful, continue to move forward. I think maybe this will inspire someone. At first, I was in shock and resented some things. Firstly, how can somebody with a long history of diabetes never have attended a diabetes school? Now, I understand that we're all very different and everyone has their own story. You don't know everything, you'll never know everything, even if people share with you. And in this regard, I see the guys in a different light. And I admire many of them, especially Lena, who became my hero. Because I understand how hard it is to put yourself on display like that. She's so strong and such a good person that she's willing to share this story in order to help others. This is why we invited everyone here. They are changing themselves. I believe they can help the people who will watch the show. They will help answer some of their questions. Will help them ask themselves these questions. Am I really in control of my diabetes? Am I living the right way? Am I happy with where my life is headed? The life of a person with diabetes is ran by a clock. The daily routine is known ahead of time. I know what I have for today and what's next. Not really. Of course it's not set in stone, sometimes circumstances change. But at least the day is planned in advance. Everything is mapped out and thought through. I take insulin four times a day. A short one before breakfast, lunch and dinner, then a longer acting one before bed. Main thing is to know your carbs. It's not hard, you can take a scale with you. Have you ever brought a scale with you? No. So what are you talking about? Kirill Kuzmin was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes 18 years ago. The most vivid memories from back then are constant hospital visits. Pain, hardship and sadness. Because of this, today, the all grown up Kirill makes the decision to always stay positive. Yeah, what a beautiful day. The sun is shining, feels like my soul is happy. The disease leaves an emotional scar, for sure. But I keep telling myself that everything is okay. However, Kirill does have to battle his irritability once his blood sugar rises. Sometimes, hyperglycemia wins this battle, says his wife Svetlana. Especially lately for some reason. I'm suffering. If the sugar is high, it's like, seriously, is it just me or what? Yeah, I can be a little grouchy. No, you get angry. Well, yeah, I can get a bit angry. I'm only human after all. I think this project is helping Kirill a lot. At least he talked about it. I think it's important that he shares with everyone. He's never talked about it and just held it inside his whole life. I think that's very hard. In all honesty, she brought me on the project. Hey, Kirill, has your wife ever been to the ocean? Yeah, when she was 12. And you? Yeah, I've been. Kirill's head is somewhere else. Everything that is happening here is important to him. The support is important. In comparison to other participants, he really stressed the support. Of course, he comes here and finds that support. A banana? 
a plane? A trip around the world. You want your own plane or to travel? This is the atmosphere that we're trying to create on our project, sharing their experience. I registered on Instagram this morning. I never had the app before. After talking with Yekaterina and Anastasia, I got the idea that my experience might be interesting to others with diabetes. Dina, what are you about to do? I'm about to change the cannula on my insulin pump. Okay, please tell us more. As many of you may already know, I have an insulin pump. Here it is. The pump contains a reservoir full of insulin. When the insulin runs out, we pump it into a new reservoir. We attach this tube, which the insulin runs through. I keep the cannula on my body all day. Right now, I have a silhouette type of cannula. I like it better since it is inserted at a 45 degree angle and is more like under the skin. It's best suited for people who are more active and do sports. The silhouette also has some quirks in its application. You can save some money. I'll tell you how. You can just switch out the needle without changing the tube. I don't change it every time. I might do it once a month. I save about 20%. You can see that I have insulin in the reservoir. And I can see how many units I have left by looking at the pump. I don't need a new reservoir for now. The tube is also full of insulin. No need to change the tube. But the cannula itself, I change about once every four to five days. Never change it before bed. Something might go wrong. We know that if a person is left without insulin, he will wake up with a huge sugar level, which is bad. So ideally, it is best to change it in the morning or afternoon. Best to do it before meals. It's lunchtime, so I will now replace it and test it right away. So you ready? Go. First of all, we just take off the pump. I treat the application area with hydrogen peroxide. They say you shouldn't do it with alcohol. HP is perfect for the job. Many ask where to apply it on the body. For me, the stomach is perfect. Insulin absorption is best in the stomach. It's closest to all the organs. Silhouette is inserted at a 45 degree angle, give or take. So we just carefully put it in. Keep it going. Okay, it's in. Then we stick the whole thing to your skin with a medical tape for a firm hold. Then very slowly and very carefully take out the needle. And so after you remove the needle, you're only left with the cannula inside to get insulin for the next three to four days. Let's see. What's the length of this cannula? There, it's written right on the package. This one is 13 millimeters. For 13 millimeters, I use half a unit, 0.5. Then I clip on the pump. As you remember, there's already insulin in the tube, so I do not have to fill it up. Now I'm going to place the little tube needle into the cannula. That's it. And I enter half a unit on the pump. And we just take this out carefully. It's not that easy because the tape is pretty strong. This is what a used tip looks like. The tape leaves marks on the application area, so I just use some medical remover. Can't even tell. That's it. Dina is still a mystery to me that I have yet to solve. I'm very careful with her. She's a very smart girl and you can learn a lot from her. And I'm really happy that we have her on our project. 
because she can show other participants what can be achieved in a sense of compensation. But she has a different goal, a goal that has nothing to do with compensation. She came on the project to lose weight, that's the most important to her. It's just that I know that I'm overweight. When I weigh less, I feel much better, lighter and more comfortable. And that is the feeling I'm after, not the number on the scale. Right now, right now we, we've hit a wall with her. Because she's very difficult. It's hard to show or prove anything to her. But we're trying. I want to try what you said. Alexei also said eat carbs before the workout and proteins after. Now, question number four. Which of the following products raise blood sugar the fastest? Is it A? Water-based oatmeal cereal B. Mashed potatoes or C. Fat-free fruit yogurt. Alexei is giving us his expert opinion going with C. Yogurt. Potatoes. Dina says B. So does Veronika. Nastya says B. Copying Dina's answer. I didn't copy, no. Let's go over how you chose your answers. Yeah. Okay, let's start with Alexei. I said C, actually. Okay, look, the oatmeal is out right away because of the slow digestible carbs. So we're left with two options, the mashed potatoes or the fruit yogurt. Yeah? Okay, the potatoes also raise the blood glucose. They're starch, after all. But if you look at the fruits, well, that's just pure sugar. Therefore, the logical answer is C, fruit yogurt. It will raise the blood glucose way faster. Okay, Dasha, your turn. I agree with Alexei. So you pick C? Yes. The fat-free fruit yogurt, yes? I was also choosing between potatoes and... Dina, comment on your answer. I completely agree that it's not the oatmeal because of the slow digestibility. I had a hard time choosing between the potatoes and the yogurt. There was also the fact that the yogurt, if fat-free, so its digestibility is fast. Nonetheless, I think that the mashed potatoes will break up faster since it's pure starch and therefore will absorb instantly. In my opinion, the glycemic index of the potatoes is higher than that of the yogurt. That's why I chose B. Not sure if it's right. I agree with Dina, Veronika? B. Just tell us why. I also think that the answer is B. I was also stuck between the potatoes and the yogurt. But the fruit yogurt is a yogurt after all, so there is protein. And the potatoes, like Dina said, are pure starch. Plus the way it's prepared, like if they were mashed. Maybe it would digest slower, but since the potatoes were first boiled and then mashed, their digestibility is high. Dina mentioned an index, glycemic index. Glycemic index, the rate of absorption of carbohydrates from food how quickly the eaten product shows up in blood in the form of glucose. Depends on the length of the carbohydrate chain. The longest chains digest longer. Therefore, will not raise the level of blood glucose quickly. Simple sugars are absorbed once in the oral cavity. Therefore, blood glucose will grow much faster. What is the glycemic index of these products? Well, hold on. Okay, Google, what about the oatmeal? 40, 50, around 50, about 50, 55, 50 is the average. And the mashed potatoes? Around 80, I think 80, 65, 70, and the yogurt 80, 85. I would say the yogurt is at 70, and the mashed potatoes 80. Okay, listen, here's the right answer. And the right answer? is B, mashed potatoes. Yeah! <laughs> now, let's look at the numbers on the index. The oatmeal is 55. The potatoes are 90. We were close. The fat-free yogurt is 45. Really? Yep. While the participants are answering the quiz questions, the endocrinologist and dietitian of the project, Anastasia Plishova, is preparing a low-calorie dessert for them, and also busting some diabetes myths along the way.
Myth number one, with diabetes, you have to limit yourself when it comes to food. Myth number two, that sweets and other high glycemic index foods are taboo. Look, it's important to understand the different types of diabetes that we're talking about. Well, there are typically two types, type 1 and type 2 diabetes. In the case of type 2, if the person is not on insulin, but is taking pills, there are some food limitations. That's a fact. On top of that, these people most likely need to lose weight. The participants that we have on the show today can eat anything they want. Another matter is that some of them also have a goal to lose weight. Excess weight not only affects the blood sugar, it also affects the hormones, which are in my body on top of the insulin. This concerns everybody, not just people with diabetes. It's not healthy for anybody to eat whatever with no control. If you realize this and understand it, the knowledge won't leave you. Myth number three, a woman with diabetes cannot have a healthy baby. Some think that diabetes is contagious, and one of our goals is to debunk these diabetes myths. Next question. How many times a day do you need to check your blood sugar? Possible answers. A. At least twice a day, morning and night. B. Three times. Or C. Over six times a day. Everybody said C. What is everybody's maximum for the day? About 20? 20, 25? Can I just say? Yeah, 100. 100? In one day? Well, it's not every day. There are those days when you have to go up to 100. Every 10 minutes. That's exactly how I figured out that proteins begin to rise my blood sugar two and a half hours later. Four hours for a fat protein. If it is rice, which is pure starch, it will take six hours to rise. In order to understand how to compensate properly, you must understand how different foods affect you. You won't get it until you measure it. That's it. It's that simple. Wow. I check it less often. I might do one or two, okay, maybe three times a day. It depends on how I'm feeling, whether the sugar is low or high. I can feel it when something is not right, which is completely wrong to do. You can't feel blood sugar. You can only check it with a blood glucose meter. Okay, dear participants, let's go have dessert. It's ready and waiting for you. I'm letting everybody know that each portion consists of 14 grams of carbohydrates, 13.9 to be exact, and 10 grams of protein. Therefore, whoever's on the pump, extend it a bit, you know. Tell us what's in it. You know what? Anastasia said that strawberries whiten your teeth. Did you know about this? No, I didn't know either. Anastasia, I wanted to ask you. Yes? There's glass. There's yogurt and strawberry. <coughs> yogurt, strawberries, and a protein mix. Collagen, psyllium, and chia seeds. You like it? Yeah. Yeah, you can make it with other berries as well. My food behavior has changed completely. Absolutely changed. I got nine more friends with diabetes. My waistline is back and my butt is cuter. There are still unconquered heights. There are plenty of them. That's the best part. It would probably be boring if you reached all your goals. You wouldn't know what to do next. This is the diet challenge to be continued.